presentation, I want to look at how we can take a traditional Access database. This database has been converted to 2007 format, which is an important thing to do before we start the whole process, and convert that database into a new Access web database. The web database is in a format which allows the data to be published up onto SharePoint. And I want to talk to you about how we do this and uh, highlight the service that we can provide to assist you with this process. If we start by opening the Northwind database, and this is the sort of traditional Northwind database, there's been a couple of minor changes made to it, which I'll point out in a second or two. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Save and Publish and I'll choose the Publish option from Backstage and I'm going to run the Web Compatibility Checker. Now when you run this in your database, the chances are you will have some web compatibility issues. This is because when you're working in SharePoint, you're not working in Access and SharePoint has to accommodate the different features of the Access application. And there are a number of different, we've got 23 issues that have arisen here, things like formatting issues, there's validation rule issues, some of them are quite simple to resolve. And then there's some slightly more complicated ones which have to do with relationships and primary keys. So before we can actually do this, there are one or two checks that we have to perform on your database. And if the database fails these checks, then it needs a little bit of structural um, change made to it. Now, these checks are normally associated with the, the requirements of the version of SharePoint. For example, SharePoint only supports up to 60 number fields per table. Well, if you've exceeded that, then you need to do some restructuring before we can possibly convert the database. In Northwind here, the only change we had to actually make uh, structurally to Northwind was to change from using an OLE object to an attachment data type because attachment data types are supported but OLE data types are not. So pre-conversion changes are really quite, uh, you know, they're to do with fundamental aspects that we can't automatically correct for you. The only other change in this database we've made is we've created a countries table and this countries table is go it has a lookup from the customer table. If I go over here into customers, there's a lookup onto this and we've done this because one of the important things uh, in meeting requirements for a web legal database which can be converted is a balance between lookups and relationships and so I've intentionally created a misbalance here in order that I can show you how that misbalance is corrected. Okay, so let's just uh, close that database and I'm going in here now to a database that we've actually performed a conversion on. So let's look at the database tools here and look at the relationships. And there's a number of changes that have had to be made to this database. The first fundamental change is that the old customer ID field was text fields and all the fields in uh, that web legal database have to be long integers. So we've actually had to create a new primary key for this table, which is called the customer ID. Now, that can be quite complicated because there's an existing relationship between the customers table and the orders table. But our uh, software is quite clever, and what it does is it automatically creates new foreign keys for you. It then links the old tables together based on the old foreign keys and updates the new foreign key so that the data sets are correctly matched and all the relationships hold. And then it um, puts all the relationships back on. So it has to take relationships off and then put them back on. The other example here is of this operation is with the countries field. The country field, again, it was a text key, so we've had to create automatically an auto number and we've also had to put an appropriate foreign key into the customer table and repopulate all that data. Another change that had to be made to this database is on the order detail table. In this case the old key was a composite key between order ID and product ID and that's not something that's actually supported. So we've had to create a new order ID field. A further change that we've had to make to Northwind relates to the employee table. 
In the employee table, whilst the primary key holds, there is another field in the employee table called reports to, and that actually looks up values from the employee table. So we have to create a new relationship to support this, and here you can see the new relationship that's been created. Once we've created all these changes, then again I can go to the Save and Publish option, I can go to Publish, I can go to Check Web Compatibility, and this time there are no errors. So there's no errors. This database is now in a form that it could be published to SharePoint. There's one or two other things we do check for. Um, you can get caught out by the fact that the web compatibility checker doesn't detect problems in data. So if you had illegal dates in this database, or you had unqualified URLs in hyperlink fields, or the hyperlink fields are too big, then the database will not convert. And again, we have special features which actually check for these and correct these errors in your database. Having done that, what you require, what we then do for you is we then create a new database and we import all the objects. And now you can see that rather than having the old style tables, we've now got the new SharePoint tables. All that would remain to be done with this database would be to now publish it up to SharePoint server. Thank you very much for listening.